Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and today we're going to take a look at using Prusa Slicer 2.0 uh, for slicing your terrain models for use on your Ender 3 and Ender 5. Now, you're asking, why would you want to do this? Why not just use Cura? Well, Cura has uh, a experimental function called variable layer height, and it is still in the test phases. Um, it doesn't work great, and Prusa Slicer 2.0 has something very similar that gives you much more control and works much better currently. So because of that, um, I want to show you how to set up Prusa Slicer for use with your Ender and show you how this can make uh, a difference in the quality of your terrain tiles. So to get started, you're going to need to download Prusa Slicer 2.0 from the Prusa website. A link is in the video description for this video. Once you have that, you're going to want to set up a new printer. Now, I've already got all this set up, but I'm going to walk you through it again and add a new printer. And if you don't have a Prusa, just leave that clicked off. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, next, uh, we're going to skip over adding Prusa printers and go directly to defining a custom printer profile. And I'm just going to call this Ender 3 Demo. Next, this is very important. You need to make sure you have Marlin selected. Uh, here's where we'll input our uh, X and Y bed size, 235 by 235. Make sure it's a 0.4 nozzle and 1.75 millimeter filament. It should be automatically in there. Uh, we'll start with just a default 205 and 60 for the temperatures, and we'll modify those later on. I uh, don't really need to worry about that. And that is now added as our uh, default printer. All right, next step, we're going to set up some of the definitions for our printer that we've just created. Uh, we're going to make sure we've got the one selected. In this case, I've already done all this, so I'm just going to walk you through my settings. You'll need to actually go through, make these changes, and once they are done, you're going to click this little disk icon here to save them. Uh, make sure printer selecting is selected up here. Under General, we're going to set the maximum print height to 250 millimeters. And you're going to make sure that Marlin is selected here. If it's not, you need to click down and actually have it selected. Next up, custom g-code. I have this in the video description for this video. Just cut and paste it. Um, I think this is pretty much identical to the start and end g-code that Cura gives you automatically for the Ender 3. I don't remember if I've modified it or not, but this is what I, view, I use in my Cura setup for the Ender 3 and Ender 5. Um, just cut and paste it. Uh, you'll have one set for the start g-code and another paragraph for the end g-code. Uh, make sure you don't have any spaces at the beginning before that first g when you cut and paste. Uh, next up is the machine limits. Ignore the stealth settings for now. You're just wanting to set up the normal ones. Uh, max feed rate for X and Y, I've got it 500. Z12, extruder 120. Accelerations for X and Y, I've got it 500. Z100, extruder 500, um, and then maximum acceleration for extruding 500 and retracting 500. Jerk is set to 10 for X and Y, 0.2 for Z, and 2.5 for extruder. Now, these are very low numbers. I realize that, but these are the numbers that I've got in my Cura profile, so I'm just using these as a start point. And over the next month or two, I will be experimenting with getting these numbers up to get it uh, some more speed, but until I get a final profile um, that works, uh, these are good safe numbers to begin with. Um, extruder 1, make sure your nozzle is 0.4 millimeter if that's what you're doing. And for this video, this is absolutely key, layer height limits. Make sure the minimum is set to 0.1, the maximum is 0.3, and you're going to see why in a few minutes. Make sure retraction length is at least 5. Right now I'm using 6, but 5 is absolute minimum. Uh, everything else is pretty standard. Um, I don't think notes, dependencies, don't need to worry about that. Um, we're going to go now to print settings and we'll go to my Ender 3 terrain. I'm using 0.2 layer height uh, as my standard height. 
Uh, you can get away with three perimeter or two perimeters. I'm using three just for some added strength. It'll add about 15 minutes to the overall print time, but it results in a much stronger piece. Uh, top layers, I've got 10 set. Bottom layers, I've got five set. Now, I know you're saying 10 layers for 0.2 layer height. That's too many. You can get away with four or five. That's true if this is going to end up being 0.2 for the top layer, which it's not, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. So I do, that's not a mistake. I actually mean to have that. Um, these are just the settings I'm starting to play with here. Uh, you could probably have vertical shell thickness click two. Um, but like I said, I still have not finalized a profile for this, for, so a lot of these are still experimental. Um, infill, we need to set it to 3% minimum. Slicer has a, the Prusa slicer has a horrible um, uh, bridging undersurface when you set that to zero. So unlike Cura, where we could print these with zero infill, you've got to set two or three percent minimum. Uh, it does add considerable print time, uh, but I just, I don't know any way around it. It does not handle the overhangs well when it's set to zero. Um, rectilinear for both of those. Uh, let's see. I'm using a skirt, no support, speeds. Um, again, these are just starting numbers. I'm basing off of my Cura profile. I'm going to massage these and get these uh, more fine-tuned over the next few months, and then I will post an official uh, Prusa Slicer profile for terrain. But until I get to that point, these are good starting numbers. 60 for perimeter, 15 for small perimeters, 50% for external perimeters. 80 for infill, 20 for solid infill, 25 for top solid infill, 60 for supports, 60 for bridges, and 20 for gap fill, 120 millimeters for travel, 30 for first layer. Um, don't have multiple extruders, advanced. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is Prusa Slicer sets these numbers higher than what the nozzle opening is. This is a fairly common technique with a lot of uh, people. They said it gives a little bit uh, better top surface quality. Um, it doesn't work well for small items, but for terrain it works okay, so we're just going to leave those at the default, same way down here. Um, output options, all of that is standard, just leave that. Notes and dependencies, no. Alright, so that's pretty much how you're going to set this up. All right, next comes the fun part. Now, what you're going to do is once you have your model loaded in Prusa Slicer, we're going to click right here, and that's going to bring up this bar on the side. Now, this blue line represents your default layer height, and if you remember, we set this to point 0.2. Um, so point 0.2 is this line. Anything to the right of it, the layer height becomes thicker. Anything to the left, it becomes thinner. And we do that by left and using the left and right mouse buttons. So down here, I'm going to make this section of the base thicker. It does not need to be 0 0.2. We're going to set that up to 0 0.3. We're then going to designate the top facing surfaces of the floor tile and the top of the topmost row of bricks as 0.1 to give them more definition. We're going to let the rest of the wall print at the default 0 0.2. And if you remember, when we set up the printer settings, under extruder 1, we set the minimum to 0.1, the maximum to 0.3. And that is what is defining the minimum and maximums here. So I'm going to right mouse click down here at the bottom and get it right up near the top of that tile. I'm just going to start coloring. Left mouse click now for the floor and just get that down. I want everything that's facing upward to be green including the top little bit of the tile there. So that's all going to be green. Going to transition immediately into red. And then we're going to go up to the top here and left clicking again, we're going to make all the top surfaces of those bricks green. So I'm going to hold my shift key down and I can start getting that gray a little bit higher so the green doesn't start too soon and slow it down. Um, everything you see gray here is the default 0.2 the greens are going to be 0.1 and the red is 0.3 the whole reason we're doing the red at 0.3 is it's going to offset some of the speed slowdown from doing these green areas at 0.1 uh, you could just leave it uh, gray for down here and just have the green color for the top facing surfaces but that's going to slow your print down we want to try to gain some speed down here where the surface quality doesn't matter by pushing it to 0.3 now, it's going to look really ugly once printed, but when the tiles are all assembled, you're not going to see it. So, all that's left to do now is slice. Go ahead and do that.
Now, one thing about Prusa Slicer, it is incredibly slow on slicing, much slower than Cura. So uh, we're going to, using the miracle of computer technology, fast forward through this. And here we go. It's all finished. You just then click Export G-Code and save it to your uh, SD card for your Ender 3 or Ender 5. Um, and that's pretty much it. And here we're going to take a look at um, a standard. These are both printed on an Ender 3. Uh, the wall model on the left is printed using Prusa Slicer just with the entire model printed at default point 0.2. The model on the right is also sliced with Prusa Slicer, and it is the one that we sliced up uh, here on screen using the variable layer heights. And as you can see, it's definitely a big difference. Um, uh, the uh, upper surfaces look much, much cleaner. Uh, you don't get that topographical map. The top row of bricks looks great, too. Um, so again, if it's, if it's worth it to you to take a little extra time on your printing, you can get a much better looking tile using Prusa Slicer 2.0. I hope this uh, little tutorial helped. If you would, please click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Thank you.